The day five prompt was pastry, so I went and did a blender guru donut with coffee. Starting off here, much the same as the cookie dunk, I've just masked out a center band that I can use as an alpha mask, so I can use this, the top and the bottom of the sphere independently here. The top half of the sphere I use as the donut, so you can see I've just done a little sketch there to work out how I'm going to map this hemisphere onto the donut and essentially taking that manifold face along the top edge of everything because you're not going to see under the donut so that doesn't need to happen. Um, so I've broken it down into the underside of the plate, top surface of the plate, outside of the donut and the inside of the donut. And each one of these I'm just using, because we're using generated coordinates, I can just use a Z mask essentially using the map range. So I can take out each section, multiply it by X and Y because we're happening evenly in the horizontal axis so that we're still maintaining that circularity. And then I'm just controlling the amount of the Z through these RGB curves so that I've got um, a proper control for the roundness of things. So that allows me, for example, to get this outward step on the outside of the donut. So I'm expanding it as it increases in the Z height. So moving through here, I wanted to know how I was going to do the icing. Um, essentially, all I did was I took a uh, the Z gradient again. So I'm using a range mask node that I've made previously. And I'm using this to mask out the band that goes over the top of the donut. And then I'm using a linear light beforehand with noise. Um, and I've turned the distortion right down, the detail scale right down on the noise, just so that I've got these smooth lumps and played with the, um, I ended up using 4D noise so I could control where the drips were, make sure I didn't have any holes in it. Um, and I've just put that through a regular displacement and added this to my main displacement line. Um, what I've done here is I'm, I want to get that sort of central section of the donut where it looks like it's been in a, a kind of a mold or I'm not sure what that would be from the baking. Um, so again, I've just subtracted from the Z and then done an absolute so I get the even gradient on both sides put that through a map range and then use that as a mask. I've just bunched, chucked a bunch of colors on just so I know what, which bits are which. It makes it a little bit easier for me to control what I'm doing. So to make the sprinkles, all I've done is I've taken a Voronoi, offset the coordinates by the Voronoi position by just doing a subtract. And then I am doing an, uh, an absolute so that I've got even spaces subtract in the X to make them elongated then used a maximum, so you're not getting the negative, and then a length. So that's quite a common way to get kind of lozenge shapes or straight lines with round ends is absolute subtract maximum length. Um, so that's all I've done, but done it within the Voronoi. And I've done two Voronois in different positions so I can get the higher density of the sprinkles. Um, added them both together, put them on a regular displacement, and I've colored those with the Voronoi color. Because I've set up all of these colors and the mask and everything, I can just duplicate that whole frame down and down so that I've got roughness and bump, and I can just input the roughness values into those mixed sockets as I would have done for the value for the for the color values. Using the same mask here, I can just uh, just put the bump onto just the dough, just the, the actual donut part. And then I can also use subsurface scattering in the same way. So I've got a subsurface on the icing, but not on the donut or sprinkles or plate. Adding a constant offset just allows me to position this. And I've gone into camera view just so I can set up the composition, kind of like a, a reference to Andrew Price's original composition. Now, instead of using one principal shader as I have done previously and just doing all of the different mixes beforehand, in this, in this case, I've made the donut with plate as one object for one principled and now I'm making the glass uh, the glass cup with the coffee as one object with one principle and then I'm mixing those principles with mixed shaders afterwards. So just setting up my shader here you can see there the stretching that's actually going on in the transparent section. Um, I needed to turn my sphere my hemisphere upside down um, but rather than just scaling it upwards where it would be inside out I also scaled it horizontally so it was uh, flipped through itself so it, it stayed outside in and I used the geometry node with the back facing socket to be able to check that. 
So now what I'm doing is I've, I've split the problem up into similar faces as before with the donut. So underside of the saucer, top face of the saucer, outside of the cup. I've ignored the handle for this one just because I thought it was going to be extra hassle. Um, coming up over the top of the cup and then the top of the coffee. So you can see here I've done the saucer already. It's very similar to the previous one. And now I'm just using this RGB curve to shape the outside of the cup profile. Using another map range here set to smoother step is going to allow me to get that top round over corner and push down that surface inside. And then using another map range set to linear allows me to get the, the flat face for the top of the coffee foam. You see I use these range masks quite a lot. Very useful, they allow me to take out separate bands and because of the way that I've folded the geometry around, this is going to be extremely useful for masking because for example, that top edge of the glass is technically between the foam as we see it on the side and the foam as we see it on the top. So I have to make sure that I've got all my masks working properly for the materiality. So you can see here, I'm just plugging these into mixes, much like with the donut, making sure my masks all make sense. Now I've just gone back in and reshaped the glass slightly. Now I can see them both in, uh, in the composition. I find it quite difficult to get the proper shape. I should have probably made it a little bit, a little bit larger scale on the X and the Y. Had some issues with artifacts inside the glass, which I think was an IOR issue, but you can see I've got that really heavy black line on the top outside. Um, I tried increasing all the samples and the passes and I tried reducing the IOR. Um, and I also tried increasing the top size of the face so that it fitted to the outside of the glass much quicker, much closer. But I ended up just having a higher IOR on the top edge of the band so that I got the light and then just reducing the IOR as it went down. So that seemed to be the, the main solution. Just much like the, the previous ones, using a hashtag frame into a map range into an RGB curves. And that is doing my scale. So I've got the uh, scaling the overall vector displacement back to a sphere and then also doing the clay wipe in the similar fashion.